Hi everybody, good morning. Welcome back to Live Art Wednesdays. Woohoo! We're here this morning, July 1st. Uh, we're going to be doing some recycled crayon art this morning. Um, so find all your broken <laughs> and old crayons and we'll get started in just a couple minutes. Can't wait to see you guys. I'm just going to make sure everything's working on my end and then we'll get started. Okay. Awesome. I hope everybody's doing well this morning. Uh, my name is Trisha Roberts and I am the art uh, educational coordinator out at the Plymouth Art Center. I've been there for two years now and that position before that I spent about a decade performing and directing and choreographing Mill Street Live. Um, and I just love the PAC. I love being there. I love working there and I feel very fortunate that we have this resource in our community. Um, just a couple quick announcements before we get started. I'm going to attach a survey to our live video. If you have been watching, if you've been participating, any sort of feedback you can give us is great. That helps me plan our future uh, live arts and our other programming. Um, you might have gotten an email from the PAC if you've been on our email list uh, for classes or uh, workshop events, things like that. Um, sharing with what we have coming up for our upcoming programming. Again, we do have summer art camp with Mary Starnicky. Uh, she's an art teacher in the Sheboygan Area School District. She was one of my art teachers. I love her dearly. She's super, super creative and, um, and just such a great expert in her area. Uh, she's also teaching a wine and paint night, but we're doing a little bit of a tropical theme. Uh, so check out our Facebook page for that. We've got um, an example of a painting that you'll be uh, helped through. So she'll take you step by step. Our plan is to have it on our back patio, uh, maybe with some tiki torches, some tropical beverages. Um, that is an adult only event. Um, so make sure you check that out. Uh, I'm also teaching Mastering Mill Street, which is a choreography camp. Basically, you go through the process of what it would be like to be a part of the cast. We do a little singing, we do a little dancing, and again, that's gonna take place outside um, so we can appropriately physical distance and be as safe as we can with COVID regulations. Um, that being said, oh, one more, one more uh, <laughs> announcement. We do have our youth art competition happening. Yesterday was supposed to be the last day to accept projects or art pieces, but we're going to extend it through Friday this week. Uh, we have a few that just came in yesterday, so we're hoping a few more will trickle in the end of the week, um, and then we'll get to judging and presenting out those awards. So again, check out our Facebook page. If you just smile is our theme. Anything that makes you smile, any art form, pictures, drawings, painting, sculpture, photography, anything like that, just um, work with your child, have them create some art, bring it on into the PAC, make sure you fill out an entry form, and then uh, we'll get to that as well. We do have some prizes available, so it is something that you definitely wanna take a part in. And it's free for you, you know what I mean? There's no entry fee or anything like that. So again, if your child is a um, mini Van Gogh or an artist, <laughs> uh, please make sure that you encourage them to do this uh, competition and that you bring over your entries by Friday. We close at four o'clock on Friday. Okay, great. Alrighty, so we are going to work on some recycled or old crayon art. Um, this is something that like hits home to me because we always had like that old five gallon bucket or ice cream pail full of crayons. And every year, you know, crayons are on the school supply list. And I just remember one year my mom was sick of buying crayons because we had so many old crayons from that, from the previous school year that she said, go through and pick out your colors. So that's um, kind of what's inspiring this already. We already have like a whole dish of old crayons right? They're still good. Um, but I'm like, what can we start using with this? You know, Hugh's hands, he's coloring, lives starting to color a little bit. Their hands are small, so they need a larger um, apparatus to work with. So all of a sudden we get these really small chunks of crayons. And it's like, what are we going to do? So um, that's what's inspiring these projects today. The first thing that you want to do is you want to, um, you want to preheat your oven for our second project. So I just preheated my oven to 350, again, 350. Um, and then you're going to wanna grab out a baking sheet. You can see mine here. Uh, wax or parchment paper would work for this on the bottom to protect your baking sheet. And then you're going to wanna find some rocks outside. So these are 
ones that I found in my backyard. Are they rocks? Sort of. Are they busted concrete? Definitely, maybe. Um, we're doing some landscaping in the back, but they'll work just fine. Um, so again, I have my rocks. I'm gonna put them on a baking sheet after I've covered it with wax paper or parchment paper, something to protect my baking sheet. And I'm gonna actually put these to heat up in the oven for 12 minutes. So I'm gonna scoot and do that. You can see here, I do have my, I think they're called trivets, um, those heat pads, right? Because when I'm done, when, after the 12 minute beeper comes off, I'm gonna pull these out and bring them and set them right here. So you wanna make sure that your space is covered and safe from the heating elements. If you're doing this with littles, make sure, make sure, make sure they understand it's hot because when these come out, these will be hot. And you too, make sure that you're using an oven mitt, okay? So I'm gonna go stick these in my oven, I'll be right back. 12 minutes at 350. Again, that's for our second project today. Our first project that we're going to be doing is we're gonna be working on um, paper, wax paper, crayon art, okay, with our iron here. I'm just gonna swoosh those over. If you have a comment, if you have a question, let me know as we go. This is an example of what we're gonna be creating. You can see um, that it's pretty color heavy if you look at it just in normal light, but if you put it up to a window, you can see that it's a little bit more translucent. So I think this would make a really great window art. Um, you could take it when we're done. You could punch a hole in it, like I'm going to, okay? Take some ribbon, tie it, tie it through. And I've seen really cool displays where they have just a whole bunch of different sizes and shapes of hearts or other shapes um, that you could do in the window and the light hits it. It's really just very pretty um, in the window and I'm sure it's kind of a bad representation, but you could get the idea that it would be really pretty to see the light coming through that art. So I'll show you how to do that really quick as we're waiting for our rocks to heat. What you're going to want to do is first and foremost, cover your space. So this is, this is my table. This is my ironing board, which I wasn't sure we had anymore, but we do. That tells you how much I iron at home. Um, and you're gonna cut out two pieces of wax paper. Again, wax paper is gonna be important for this project, not parchment paper, wax paper. And I'm gonna lay those down on my surface. I'm also going to plug in my iron here and turn it on the lowest setting. So I'm gonna make sure that it's on one. Um, just make sure that's on your iron, is on the lowest setting, um, just because the, mat, the wax from the crayons melts really fast. The next thing I'm going to do is shave off my crayons. So I'm gonna take my broken pieces, going to unwrap them as best as I can. This is a great way that you can have littles help too if you're working on this with small children. They can work on wrapping. Now there's several different ways you can shave it. Oh my gosh, my oven! <laughs> like to admit that that doesn't happen every time we make pizza but it absolutely does every time we make pizza that thing goes off nap time doesn't matter always blaring at us Tom if you're watching I'm sure you're laughing your face off right now I use this stool Tom can just jump and hit it but I cannot anyways whew, everybody's safe we're good to go um wax crayons making little pieces so shaving our pieces if you have a crayon sharpener that's the safest best way to do this if you have an old, I'm gonna say old, like you're not using anymore for food, um, like zester or peeler that you can kind of like scrape and make things, uh, make the shavings, that would be really good too. Just because, um, yeah, Tom's, Tom's dying at home, yeah, because the alarm went off if you didn't hear that. Okay, anyways, um, <laughs> if you have a, like a zester or a shredder, a cheese shredder, that you're not using for food anymore, right? Because it's kind of hard to get the wax off. That's what I would suggest, especially if you're working with small children. Now, I don't have either of those things at home with me, but I do have an old kitchen knife, so that's what I'm gonna be using today. Please, please, please be careful. Just a little Boy Scout tip, never cut towards yourself, always away. Always away, be very, very careful. Here I am a little bit nervous using a knife on live Facebook, but that's okay. I don't know if you can see, but I'm just gently shaving. I can move this up here a little bit. 
So you can see, I'm gently shaving small pieces of crayon off. And while you're doing this, again, this would be a great like if you're if you're um, doing this with your kids, for example, maybe do this beforehand, okay? Just to keep it safe. Okay, I know like Liv and Hugh um, visit grandma and grandpa these mornings, so I'm able to have some focused time. Um, but this is something I definitely prep before they would help me with this. Okay, so I'm gonna do some purple. I'm gonna move back to my space because it's a little bit easier over here. Some purple, I think I'm gonna do some blue. You know, if you're looking for decorations for the 4th of July, we did do a patriotic theme last week um, with some painting cans and our popsicle sticks, um, stars. This is a great way too that you could do that. I'm gonna shave some blue. You could do like red, white, and blue crayons and then maybe do stars and make a design in your window. So that would be. That would be fun too. Again, keeping your workspace clean and steady so you do not cut yourself is really important. Please do not hurt yourself doing this. Okay, so I have some purple, I have some blue. I'm trying to think of what other color. Maybe I'll add some gray, that could be cool. I'm gonna unwrap the gray. Also for our next project, you're going to need shavings or chunks of crayons. So if you wanna do extra for our next project too, that would be a good idea. Gosh, sometimes peeling the crayon is a little bit more difficult than I anticipate. Something else you could consider too is if you don't have a sharp object at home um, that you want your kids using, maybe something like a quarter could probably work. Just thinking something of more with, with a rounded edge that they could shift, shift and use um, up and down or your, your nail too though it kind of gets stuck underneath your nail, but it could work. You know, sometimes you just have to make things work. And I'm not adding a lot of pressure because I want to keep them thin so they melt quickly. Again, my iron is on the lowest setting. I'm ready with that. Okay, I think this is good enough. Good enough. Again, please, please, please be careful if you're using a knife. Okay, we take one piece of wax paper. Ta-da! We're gonna put our shavings on top of that. You can then choose two ways to do this. You can take a second piece of wax paper, which is what I'm choosing, to lay on top. Or you could take the wax paper that you have and just fold it in half. Either way will work, okay? So I have it's kind of hard to see under the newspaper, but you can see I have my shavings here. You don't need to fill the page. It all depends on like how much color you want to use. Remember that this is going to melt and spread. Okay, so I'm going to put my wax paper on top. Again, my iron is on the lowest setting. I'm going to take, oh, I have some more shavings here that I want to use. Hold, please, pause. Doo -doo -doo. There we go. Okay. I'm going to put my knife somewhere safe. <clears throat> I'm going to take another piece of paper. So I put my second piece of wax paper on top of my first piece. And then it's basically sandwiching the, um, oh, my brain today. It's sandwiching the, um, what are those called? The crayon bits? The shavings? Crayon shavings. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Now I know that it's in the middle, so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna very quickly press and pull along, press and pull along, just twice. Just twice and I'm gonna check it, okay? Needs a little bit longer, I'm gonna push it down, okay, and pull, push it down, and pull. Again, a little bit at a time, I'm gonna pick this up and show you right away. Do you see it's already starting to melt and that was only after just a couple, okay? I'm gonna flip it over, I'm gonna do it again, push down and drag, push down and drag, okay. You can see my paper's getting a little bit wrinkly. If I figure out, be careful because it's warm. If I figure out how to make it less wrinkly, I'll let you know, but that might just be with the size of the shavings, okay? So I'm gonna do it one more time. I see that I wanna move some of the, um, some of the wax down this way so it makes more of a space that I can cut a shape in. 
So I'm going to encourage the wax that way. Again, like one 1,000, two 1,000, you don't wanna hold it on there super long. You can see it's closing the gap one more time. One more time. One 1,000, two 1,000, 1,000, two 1,000. Okay, and I think that's probably the best you wanna do. You wanna be careful, again, I have everything covered with newspaper just because the wax will sometimes leak out, okay? Um, but you can see here that the colors have melded together. I'm gonna just press it just a little bit more. I have one big chunk in there that I wanna see if I can melt and encourage to go. It's almost there. Again, thinner shavings will help and meld a little bit easier. Okay, I think that's about as best as I'm gonna do. Okay, so now you have a blob. What do I do with this blob? It's a good question. You could do several things with the blob. You could freehand a style with your scissors and just cut. You could um, ha draw out a picture on this, right? And then cut it out. Um, another great thing to do too is to make some sort of template and have your child chase or trace around it. So you can teach them about, so sorry. Okay, we're still safe, I promise. No fire, we're good. Okay, I'm getting my workout in today. Um, you could cut out a template, right? So some sort of thicker paper, maybe a cardboard, maybe you have an old cardboard box, cut out a heart or something like that, and then you can have them um, trace with that. So this is kind of like a little bit of a heart, maybe a taller heart. So I'm gonna just cut myself out another heart here. Freehand. And there we go. See this little hole in the middle <laughs> where my wax didn't quite get. But again, it looks really cool this way and then you put it up to the window and it's more translucent. So I'll add a picture, I'll, I'll string this one too. Maybe I'll do a couple more and then I'll add a picture to show you um, what they look like in my window when we're all done. Great, as we're waiting, I just heard my oven beep. So we have about one more minute before those rocks are gonna be hot enough. I'm going to just adjust this and I'm gonna quickly take some of my crayons here and I'm gonna make up some bigger pieces that are easier to maneuver so we can work on our next project. Our next project is paint, basically a painted rock but with wax. So we're gonna melt the wax, the crayon, onto our rock. This one you have to be really careful with if you're working with children um, just because it will be a hot surface and you have to do it while the rocks are hot. So maybe if you have old oven mitts they could wear, um, that gets a little tricky with the pinching, but you wanna just make sure that you're not um, working with the hot surface barehanded. So again, I'm just gonna get some of this ready to go here so I can show you guys right away our painted wax rock. Okay, there's my oven and I can turn it off and hopefully we won't have a fire alarm situation again. Okay, be right back. put these just protect my table there we go. again I have the trivets underneath you can see my racks here I'll just push this one a little closer to me so you can see both of them again this one you want to have everything ready to go before you get started I just used a ruler you got to use what you have right okay and then as soon as those racks come out of the oven we're gonna very carefully put the wax on top and watch it melt. This is cool because it's like live. You can watch what happens as you go here. So I don't know if you can see it just sort of drip down. Again, you wanna be super careful um, because you don't wanna to touch the rock because they are very hot, very, very hot. <clears throat> I'm going to just work on, we'll do like a bluish one too here. I'm gonna make some bigger pieces to see if they'll sit on top and do more of a slow melt situation. Again, being very, whoop, missed. <laughs> being very careful 
And two, as you're watching uh, my example here, that can help you decide like what style of rock. So mine have some bigger slants, right? So um, that's a little tricky when it comes to um, getting more color to stay. That other color, maybe green. Green would be cool. Or purple, I have some purple here too. So again, um, this is hot, so you just wanna be careful in your workspace. And you wanna make sure too that you're protecting um, your, your kitchenware. If this is something like you're using your, like I'm using my good kitchen pans right now, I wanna make sure that I'm protecting it, okay? So as you can see, you're gonna let them cool and dry um, as they go here, but I'm gonna just try a little bit more. You can add them at different times, all the um, bits and pieces and shavings, right? So like then they'll maybe melt at different speeds, but it's a cool exercise. I'm wondering if I can just put this big piece, this big piece on this one and see what happens. I'm kind of holding it there for a second. I would not have your children hold it on there. There we go. Then you can kind of encourage the color where you want it. So maybe you could help out in that regard. Doing a little bit bigger piece and encouraging it to go to help the rock be covered. And then we're gonna move this someplace safe where little hands can't touch it and let them dry. Okay, so I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna just move it into my kitchen so it can cool down. And we'll check them when we're all done with our third project today. So if you're into painted rocks, we do that at the Plymouth Art Center sometimes with our um, live make and or not our live, but their in-person make and takes. Um, that's a really fun exercise you can do as well. Okay, finally, our last project today is our melted crayon canvas art. So this one I am excited about because I've always seen it done and I've never quite done it before. So we're gonna try together today to do that. Normally our live classes go about a half an hour. This one might go just a little bit longer again because I'm working in real time with you. Um, but these are always up so you can come back, check in, um, and, and like skip through different parts to get to the different projects. Okay, so what I did is I pulled out crayons and I organized them how I wanted them. There's several different ways that you could do this. I'm just gonna set these up here while I'm working. Um, and what I mean by that is a lot of times I'll see this where the crayons are just on the top. So you could glue crayons right here on the top, right next to each other, and then work to melt them so they drip down on the canvas. I'm gonna try something a little bit different today. I'd like to try to put them in the shape of a heart because I wanna put a saying, I don't know if you can see, very lightly, I very lightly traced a heart on my canvas. So then when I melt them, it's gonna come down from the corner heart and I'm gonna to try to put a saying, maybe write or paint and put a saying up in this corner. That's my goal, we'll see how well it turns out, but I think you guys will get the principle behind it as we go here. Don't need my oven anymore, or not my oven, my iron. My goodness. <clears throat> so I'm going to plan out where I'm putting everything on my canvas. So again, I traced a heart because I know I want to put a little bit of a saying in here. So I'm going to hot glue my crayons onto my canvas. And again, you want to be careful. Glue's hot. There we go. Little dab will do. And I'm going to just put a little bit of a line because I know where I'm going with my next ones. Again, I pre-planned this to make sure that it would fit. That's something you can do as well. Because again, I'm going for a non-traditional shape with this project. I'm going for a heart. So you're gonna wanna space them out so we get that outline here. Um, also, I am using new crayons for this just so I can get that appearance that I'm looking for, but you can definitely use 
um, older crayons. They'd be a little bit smaller. The other thing for this project that you're gonna wanna have ready besides your glue gun is your hair dryer. Nope, that one's not next, this one's next. And did that wrong, that one goes here, this one goes there. Perfect. Okay, so you can see that I have one side of my heart glued on and I might attach those a little bit more securely in a minute. I just wanna get them tacked on so I know where they're going. Like my yellow is not really on. So I'm gonna just redo that one. Boop. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and do my other side. You could do this one by one. I'm doing, um, I'm drawing a line, a bead, just so I can see where I'd like my crayons to go. I just think this looks really cool when it's done, so I'm hopeful that it does. Um, canvases and other tools that you might need. Um, Hobby Lobby up in Manitowoc is open, so if that's something that you want to look at, they do this great, hmm, my pink here. They do a great um, sale with canvases. They have specific sizes, but you can get like a pack of seven or eight for like 11 or $12. They're not the most professional canvases, but they get the job done for something like this. Okay, so I have hot glued on my crayons. Now you can see, right, you can see the outline of the heart in that negative space. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to get the hair dryer out and we're going to heat the crayons so they melt. So I'm going to hold it like this because I want the wax to fall down onto the canvas, okay? Um, it might get a little noisy. I do not have a very quiet hair dryer, but we'll just see how it goes. It's probably less noisy than my fire alarm, but we'll test, we'll test the theory. All right. This is one that I did not get to practice before right now, so we're just gonna say a little prayer and pray it goes well. Here we go. because first of all, how exciting is that? Second of all, it is splattering everywhere. It is splattering everywhere. So I need to just adjust how I'm doing this really quick, hang tight with me. Um, also, my crayons are kind of wobbling because they're not super secure with that hot glue. So I might um, just re-secure those for a second, but this is turning out, look at that one blue crayon. Already really exciting. So, um, but look at my knife. <laughs> this is why we use old things that we're not using anymore. Tommy may need a new ironing board. It's totally fine, art board. This is not my art board, it's all good. Okay, plug back in that hot glue gun. Reattach, re-secure the crayons. That's our first goal. Thanks guys for hanging tight with me as we kind of experiment with this together. Again, this is not one that I practiced or prepped beforehand just because of the supplies that I have. I wanna make sure that I give you guys the best example. But I think it's kind of fun to work through this together. Okay. That one's good. This one. I could get a little bit more here. We'll just add a little dot. Again, if you're hot gluing, please be careful because they are really hot. Just 
just use this now. A little bit of extra hot glue there. And again, some cleanup can be done once you're all done. That one's good, that one's good. I'm just gonna give these guys a little wiggle to make sure they're not gonna flop, flop, flop around on me. I don't know why I said flop three times. But here we are. Okay, there. Excellent. All right, I think I'm ready. Again, I'm gonna unplug this. Whew. This is exciting. I'm going to uh, just protect my surroundings a little bit better now that I know what kind of uh, splatter is happening. Always keep some extra newspaper on hand. Put some on my floor. <laughs> Put some across my table. So again, we catch that splatter. Again, a little bit messier than I anticipated, but that's okay, we're doing it. We've committed, we're here together. All right, and we're back. Grab that hair dryer, grab your space. Here we go. I turned my dryer on low this time instead of high, just to control some of the splatter. Okay, so here we go. My red crayon's going. light pink brand to uh, splatter towards the canvas. white, 
Just because they wanted more traditional, like rainbow bright colors. And I've seen some really cool ones with like black crayons, brown crayons, more of a neutral um, basis. Also, my crayons are spread further apart. You can do them where the crayons are right, right next to each other. Again, lining them on the top or bottom to have like a full grip down the canvas. That also looks very cool. I'm turning my canvas again because I have, um, I put them in a different kind of order. Can you wax everywhere? It's fine, it's fine. And I'm just working my way across the canvas. You see orange. Orange is my favorite color. is that it's easy to peel off. So let's say maybe accidentally you got it all over your dining room table. Sorry, Tom. Um, I will be working on peeling that off this afternoon. Okay, boom. How cool is this? I'm gonna walk around my, my art ironing board now and show you. You can see the outline of the heart. You can see all the different drips. Okay, that's really cool. And I'm gonna work on putting some sort of saying up in here, I think, but you could just leave it as is. Really cool um, for your artistic space. Um, makes a great gift too. I'm gonna set this down so it can dry. I'm gonna run back to my kitchen really quick and grab those rocks that we were working on earlier. Show you how those look. They're cool. So however long that was, they are cool. To the touch, probably cool to look at too. Okay, here we are. So you can see, my lighting's not good here, but you can see that the rock is covered in wax. So it's another cool way to do uh, painted rocks, but with wax instead. Great. All right, everybody, thank you so much for coming on this splatter journey with me. I have definitely have quite the mess to clean up. 
um, but I'm really happy to be here. I'm happy to be working for the Art Center. I'm happy to provide these experiences for you. So please, please uh, give us some feedback in the comments section of this video. I'll put our little survey. It's just a couple questions. Um, I'm looking for suggestions on how I can best serve you. And we'll be doing this through the rest of the summer. So we'll look forward to seeing you next week, Wednesday. Thanks. Share your projects. We'd love to see them. Have a great day, everyone.